Animators love to slip their own little jokes into the backgrounds of their movies. But the folks at Pixar have taken things to a new level, adding tons of hidden references to their own past and future films into each of their movies. Here's a look at the best of the best. Toy Story Stories Woody makes a rousing speech in front of a bookshelf in Toy Story. If you examine the titles of the books on the shelf very closely, you'll spot a few familiar titles. The Adventures of Andre and Wally B, Tin Toy, and Knick Knack are all the titles of short films that Pixar produced prior to Toy Story. Don't overlook that carpet. There's a tense scene in Toy Story where Buzz desperately tries to find an escape route out of Sid's house, lest he join Sid's collection of misfit toys. But what makes it extra terrifying to those with an eagle eye is the fact that Sid's carpet is the same design as what's in the Overlook Hotel from the 1980 thriller The Shining. The Lion King is everywhere. You'll have to squint to see it, but in A Bug's Life, if you look very closely during the scene of Flick soaking in the ambience of Bug City, you'll see just how far the phenomenon of The Lion King's Broadway adaptation has traveled. Mrs. Potato Head's Reading Material When Mr. Potato Head makes his appearance in Toy Story 2, he pretty much steals the show. And Mrs. Potato Head agrees. When she realizes that she's found her missing earring, she immediately throws it down the book she's been reading, a storybook of A Bug's Life. A Nemo Preview There are Easter eggs, and then there are next level Easter eggs. You know the bit of Monsters, Inc. where Boohan sully her stuffed Nemo? Well, Finding Nemo didn't come out until two years after Monsters, Inc. It's all part of Pixar's master plan. An incredible cameo. Pixar also snuck a sneak peek of a future film into Finding Nemo itself. If you look closely at the bit where the kid in the dentist's office is scared senseless by the sounds of Nemo's escape attempt, you'll see that he's reading a Mr. Incredible comic book, a full year and a half before The Incredibles hit theaters. Rex isn't extinct. Of all the things you'd expect to survive our planet's self-induced ecological disaster in Wally, you wouldn't predict that one of Andy's toys from Toy Story would be on that list of items, let alone the one that's been extinct for millions of years. Nonetheless, when we're given a look into Wally's sanctuary and see all the junk contained within its walls, there's Rex's toothy grin smiling back at you. Postcard from the Fredricksons As we know from the opening credits of Up, Carl and Ellie Fredrickson traveled quite a bit in their youth. In the process, they've apparently made a few friendships that we've yet to see explored. If you take a very close look at the bulletin board in Andy's room in Toy Story 3, you'll see that the Fredricksons sent Andy a postcard. That's considerate of them. Monster in the Woodwork When Princess Merida takes it upon herself to stroll through the forest, she finds herself at the house of a witch. Merida watches in awe as a magic broom moves around the room on its own power. But what's more fascinating is the path it takes, past a log which has Sully from Monsters, Inc. carved into it. A113 marks the spot. You may already be aware of how A113 has a tendency to show up in just about every film produced by Pixar. It's shown up on a license plate in Toy Story, a train in Cars, on a tag attached to Get the Rat's Ear in Ratatouille, and in many, many more places. So what is A113? Why not ask the man himself, Pixar's chief creative officer, John Lasseter. A113 was the animation um, classroom at California Institute of the Arts in the character animation program. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw, and leave us a comment to let us know which Pixar Easter egg you like the best.